Chapter 21 of Danger in Deep Space. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Danger in Deep Space by Kerry Rockwell. Narrated by Sam Holloway. Chapter 21 Tom stirred. He rolled his head from side to side. His mouth was dry, and there was a sick feeling in the pit of his stomach. He opened his eyes and stared at the control panel in front of him. Instinctively, he began to check the dials and gauges. He settled on one and waited for his pounding heart to return to normal. His eyes cleared, and the gauge swam into view. He read the figures aloud. Distance in miles since departure. 14,500. Something clicked. He let out a yell. We've made it! We've made it! He turned and began to pound Connell on the back. Major Connell, Major, wake up, sir. We've made it. We're in free fall. Junior's far behind us. Uh, uh, what? Top! What? Connell said, rolling his eyes. In all his experience, he had never felt such acceleration. He glanced at the gauge. Distance! He read. Fifteen thousand miles! The gauge ticked on. We've made it, sir, said Tom. Astro gave us a kick in the pants we'll never forget. Connell grinned at Tom's excitement. There was reason to be excited. They were free. He turned to the intercom, but before he could speak, Astro's voice roared into his ears. Report from the power deck, sir, said Astro. Acceleration normal. Request permission to open up on hyperdrive. Permission granted, said Connell. Look, sir, said Tom. On the teleceiver screen, Junior is getting his bumps. Connell glanced up at the screen. One by one, the white puffs of dust from the reactor units were exploding on the surface of the planetoid. Soon, the whole satellite was covered with the radioactive cloud. I'm sure glad we're not in that baby now, whispered Tom. Same here, spaceman, said Connell. It was the evening of the first full day after leaving Junior before the routine of the long call back to Space Academy had begun. The Polaris was on automatic control, and everyone was assembled in the mess room. Well, boys, said Connell, our mission is a complete success. I've finished making out a report to Space Academy, and everything's fine. Incidentally, Manning, he continued, if you're worried about having broken your word when you escaped from the space station, forget it. You more than made up for it by your work in helping us get Loring and Mason. Roger smiled gratefully and gulped. Thank you, sir. Loring and Mason, who'd eaten their meal separately from the others, listened silently. Loring got up and faced them. The room became silent. Loring flushed. I'd like to say something. He began hauntingly. If I can. Go ahead, said Connell. Well, said Loring. It's hard to say this, but Mason and myself, well... He paused. I don't know what happened to us on the first trip out here, Major, but when we saw that satellite and the copper, something just went wrong inside. One thing led to another, and before we knew it, we were in so deep we couldn't get out. The faces around the table were stony, expressionless. Nobody deserves less consideration than me and Mason. And well, you know yourself, sir, that we were pretty good spacemen at one time. You picked us for the first trip out to Tara with you. Connell nodded. And well, sir, the main thing is about Jardine and Bangs. I know we're going to be sent to the prison asteroid, and we deserve it. But we've been thinking, sir, about Jardines and Bangs as wives and kids. They must have lost everything in that crash of the Annie Jones. So if the Major would recommend that Mason and me be sent to the Titan Mines instead of the Rock, we could send our credits back to help take care of the kids and all. No one spoke. That's all, said Loring. He and Mason left the room. Connell glanced around the table. Well, he asked, this is your first struggle with justice. Each of you, Tom, Roger, Astro, Alfie, will be faced with this sort of thing during your careers as spacemen. What would you do? The four cadets looked at each other, each wondering what the other would say. Finally, Connell turned to Alfie. You're first, Alfie, said Connell. I'd send them to the mines, sir, 
said Alfie. Connell's face was impressive. Roger? Same here, sir, replied Roger. Astro? asked Connell. I'd do anything to help the kids, sir, said Astro, an orphan himself. Tom? Tom hesitated. They deserve the rock, sir. I don't have any feeling for them, but if they go to the rock, that doesn't do any more than punish them. If they go to the mines, they'll be punished and help someone else too. I'd send them to Titan and exile them from Earth forever. Connell studied the cadets a moment. He turned to Shinny. Think they made a good decision, Nick? I like what young Tommy here had to say, Lou, answered Shinny. Best part about justice is when the man himself suffers from his own guilty feelings, rather than what you do to him as punishment. I think they did all right. All right, said Connell. I'll make the recommendation as you've suggested. Suddenly he turned to Shinny. What about you and all this, Nick? I don't mean that you were hooked up with Loring and Mason. I know you were just prospecting, and you've proved yourself to be a true spaceman. But what will happen to you now? I'll tell you what's going to happen to me, snapped Shinny. You're going to re-enlist me in the Solar Guard, right here, right now. What? exploded Connell. And then you're going to retire me, right here, right now, with a full pension. Why, you old space-crawling? Suddenly he looked around the table and saw the laughing faces of Tom, Roger, Astro and Alfie. All right, he said. But between your enlistment and your retirement, I'm going to make you polish every bit of brass on this space wagon, from the radar mast to the exhaust tubes. Shinny smiled his toothless smile and looked at Tom. Get the logbook, Tommy, he said. This is official. I'm going to do something no other man in the entire history of the Solar Guard ever did before. What's that, Mr. Shinny? asked Tom with a smile. Enlist? serve time and retire with a full pension all on the same blasted spaceship the polaris end of chapter 21 danger in deep space was produced and edited by stuart bell and was narrated by sam holloway major connell was performed by porrick oweka tom corbett was performed by david alt roger manning was performed by matthew baker bill loring was performed by Matthew Ward. Mr. Shinney was performed by Peter Yearsley. Astro was performed by Megan Argo. Al Mason was performed by Greg Vestor. Captain Strong was performed by Peter Yearsley. Alfie Higgins was performed by Patty Cunningham. Terry Scott was performed by Brett Downey. Captain Steffens was performed by Stuart Bell. Commander Walters was performed by David Sloan. Captain Genledge was performed by Matthew Ward. James Jardine was performed by David Sloan. Enlisted Guard. Read by Jody Bly. Leyland Bangs was performed by David Lawrence. Connell's first skipper was performed by Jody Bly. Spaceport Control read by Laurie Ann Walden. The Central Communicator was performed by Ernst Patinama. And the Restaurant Vice was performed by Stuart Bell. Jetliner San Francisco was performed by Patty Cunningham. End of danger in deep space by carrie rockwell